Ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to speak to you about a building project in Brazil. Now you may think that I'm going to mention a tall building in one of Brazil's big cities such as Sao Paulo. Or you might think I'm going to speak about the many projects which are currently underway in order to prepare for the World Cup or the Olympics, both of which will be held in, um, in Brazil very soon. However, today I would like to speak to you about a construction project taking place in the Amazon, many miles north of the country's main cities. I'm going to speak to you about a dam called Belo Monte, which is currently being built. The project is facing a great deal of opposition, and its costs are enormous. However, the Brazilian government hopes that it will soon meet the growing energy needs of the country's population, and this is indeed why the project is going ahead. The first thing to be said about the Belo Monte Dam is that it is huge. There are currently 20,000 labourers working on it. Its maximum output will be over 11,000 megawatts. When complete, it will be the third largest hydropower plant of its type in the world. The budget that has been set aside for it is sky high, the equivalent of 14.4 billion US dollars. However, as you may guess, an immense project of this type is not free from controversy. Many protesters and campaigners have been trying to prevent the project from going ahead. Opponents of the dam cite many different reasons. Firstly, they cite the environmental threat to the Amazon saying that this marvellous haven of nature and biodiversity will be destroyed forever. Secondly, they speak of how the rights of the indigenous peoples who are native to the area are being violated. Others who oppose the project focus on the huge costs and the fact that the dam may well be unable to meet the energy needs that it aims to. A handful of well-known figures have even joined these opponents. One notable example is James Cameron, a Hollywood film director. Nevertheless, the building of the Belo Monte Dam is going ahead at full steam and is to be completed by 2019. But why is a huge dam of this type even needed? Why should it be necessary to build a power plant of this type? Is it all really worthwhile in the end? Well, as you are no doubt already aware, Brazil is currently going through a period of economic growth. While Europe's economy stagnates, Latin America is forging ahead. Tens of millions of Brazilians are being lifted out of poverty. This is a great improvement and will mean that living conditions across the country will significantly rise for many people. However, it also means that Brazilians are becoming more demanding in terms of their energy needs. In order to meet these needs, the government will have to ensure that it adds around 6,000 megawatts of power each year for the next decade. Of course, nowadays there are many different options for increasing power generation. Thanks to modern technology, governments are no longer restricted to the sole option of coal-fired power stations for generating electricity. The country has vast gas and oil reserves. It also has great potential for other renewables such as wind and solar energy. It could even consider options such as nuclear energy. In order to decide how Brazil can provide enough energy for its population, the Energy Ministry has ranked the different sources of energy using a number of different criteria. The result of this was that hydropower stands at the top of the list, followed closely by wind power. Now it can of course be risky to opt for one sole source of energy, so the Brazilian government has decided to generate 50% of the new supply that's needed from hydropower and 30% from wind. This means that a huge project such as the Belo Monte Dam is necessary in order to reach these requirements. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take a short break here before continuing on this tame, same topic shortly. There is still a great deal more to be said, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you.